Okay, welcome back to the next installment of the DIY Aquarium Controller. Uh, this one's about the temperature sensor. This one's mostly hardware. It's pretty straightforward, so this will probably be a quick video. Uh, <coughs> essentially, you'll need some parts. Now, again, this is if you're going to do it exactly like I did it. There are different ways to do it here, uh, but I'm just going to go after, uh, go over how I did it. So you can buy these DS18B20 temperature sensors uh, in a waterproof form already. They're just a couple bucks each. Uh, essentially, it's a usually a stainless steel end with the sensor in it, and then it is heat shrink wrapped with the wires uh, going up to an end where it's split into the three conductors. The yellow is the signal. The red is the power to the sensor. 3.3 uh, volts and the black is the ground. And sometimes I've seen that the yellow is a green so that that's a thing depending on the sensor you get. Uh, also apparently the ones made by a company named DROC uh, are le le least likely to corrode. You're also going to need a 4.7k resistor, soldering iron with some solder, uh, maybe a small piece of proto board and some double-ended DuPont female connectors to make it the way and connect it the way I did. Uh, so here's the circuit of the way I did. So essentially you've got your your temperature sensor here at the end of the wire. It splits off into three. The yellow goes to one of your designated GPIO uh, input pins and then the red goes to 3.3 uh, .3 volts. So mine connects to my I have that connector box and there's two rails. There's one for ground, there's one for 3.3 volt. So mine goes to a 3.3 volt that is coming from the Pi. And then the ground goes to a ground pin coming from the Pi as well. Uh, and then what we have in between our sensor wire and our power wire is a 4.7K ohm resistor. And that's just needed for uh, pull up, pull down and just to create a, a good signal. Uh, so essentially all you have to do is, you know, tin your stuff, solder it together, and I will quickly show you what mine looks like in terms of hardware now. Okay, so here's a quick look at the actual hardware uh, that I did in terms of setting this up. So the temperature sensor comes with a good length of wire. The wire comes along here. It's got the three colored wires, the red, the black, and the yellow. Then I've got it soldered uh, onto each one of the wires there solders onto one of those pins, those L-shaped pins. Uh, so in this configuration, that far one is the black, which connects to the black wire. Now that's actually the wrong end there. That's a male, but it should be a female. This is just for uh, example sake. And that comes over to the ground on the GPIO. The second one here is a, uh, it's soldered to the second pin there, soldered to the red wire, and that goes to the red wire, and that goes to the 3.3 volt uh, power supply. And the third, the yellow wire is soldered to that pin, which is then connected to this yellow wire, which goes to, uh, you can choose whatever GPIO pin, I think mine's on number four. And then I've got a resistor, a 4.7K resistor that's bridging between the 3.7 uh, volt input there and the yellow uh, sensor wire pin there. Uh, this is what mine actually looks like. It's pretty ghetto. I just used a, a chunk of this proto board stuff, ripped it off and, and made it work. So again, see my black wires connected there. My red wire is connected there, yellow wire is there, it's soldered on the other side all together with big globs of solder. So it's not pretty but it's functional. You can do something similar and uh, back to the computer screen so we can look at the circuit a little easier there. Okay, once you've got your hardware all settled and sorted, it's time to do the programming. You don't have to do anything in PuTTY or in the Raspberry Pi itself for a temperature sensor. All you have to do is connect it to your Pi and then go to your uh, Reef Pi software to set it up. Again, we'll just go back to my uh, 140 Pi here. Uh, this is my temperature sensor area. So this is, yes, my house is cold. Uh, it's not actually in any water right now, so that's the temperature. <laughs> being monitored down here. Uh, 
to set it up, we'll first go to configuration, make sure that our temperature uh, checkbox is checked, update it if you need to, and then we can go to the drop down and you'll see the temperature section here. Um, oh, let me just make sure. Configuration connectors. Yeah, no, you don't have to. You don't have to add anything in here. You just go right to your temperature sensor. Uh, you click add. And we'll just edit on this one. Give it a name, and then what happens is once your sensor is connected and recognized, in this drop down you'll see something. It usually starts with 28. That's often the only thing that's going to drop down is your sensor on there, and you can add multiple sensors if you want. Uh, that's going to be your temperature sensor. You can choose Fahrenheit or Celsius enabled and then alerts will happen at certain temperatures. Control heater, uh, so this is where you're going to choose your, your pump that's connected to one of your relays or your heaters that's connected to one of your relays and they'll have, you can set thresholds and stuff like that. And here's just another, another graph. Uh, you can set some chart definitions and whatnot. So it is, it is pretty easy. It's almost plug and play if it wasn't for having to solder the resistor in place and, and the actual connection to the to the Pi. But that's it. That's how you do it. Simple, simple. And then it'll start reading on your dashboard uh, if you add that graph to your dashboard. And you do that by configuring your dashboard here. Alright, 